Good evening. Welcome to the call. Welcome to the call. Who is this? Can you hear me? Hello? Yes. Who is this? Candace. Hey, Candace. Welcome to the call. We'll get started shortly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to the call. This is Rudy Clay Jr. for the Money Training Call. This is out of Gary, Indiana. Welcome to the call, Candace. Welcome to the calls. Seems like you're the first one on the call. We're going to get this call started, though, because uh, I told everyone I will commit to some training each evening. So, first of all, without further ado, we always uh, with prayer. So, Father, in, in the name of Jesus, make this a great call. Make this a great learning call that's absorbed very, very easily and very good. And continue to bless all team win members and help all those who need your help all around the world in the hospital. Amen. Amen. Okay. Welcome to the call. Welcome to the call, everybody. Uh, who do we have? Was that Benny Muhammad come in on the line? Yes, Welcome it to was, the call. Brother. Thank you. Okay. Who else do we have on the line with us uh, this evening? Hey, Bridget. Hey, hey. Welcome to the call, Bridget. Uh, let me, matter of fact, let me put your name here. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Let's get this call started. Okay, now you know today, uh, everything, now this is, uh, you know, I want to say for educational and informational purposes, but we're getting right into this training. Okay. And where did we leave off? We left off at the morning star. Everybody's there. Everybody can see the screen. Yes. Okay. Good. Yes, sir. Okay, well, let's get started. We're going to start on the candlestick trading Bible. This is the morning star. You know, yesterday, well, I'll give you a little, you remember, we was dealing with the gray stone doji. I kept calling it gray. I wasn't calling it gray stone, but gray stone doji. Did we see how that happened this morning? It was this one right here. 
the dragonfly doji. Remember this morning we saw the trend change with the it was a, was it a dragonfly or was it the gravestone, Bridget? I think that was a gravestone. I think it was the gravestone. Yeah, it was the gravestone doji this morning. So now the next thing that we're going into is the morning star. We use that a lot. We see that a lot. And uh, so the morning star, the bears count and all that, let's get started. Now the morning star is a pattern. The morning star pattern is considered as a bullish reversal pattern. So that means it's, it's bullish and it's reversing. It, uh, now everybody, everybody knows what the bullish and the bearish, right? Bears going down, the bullish going up. So the morning star pattern is considered a bullish reversal pattern. It often occurs at the bottom of a downtrend, and it is con and it consists of three candlesticks. See these three candlesticks? Mm -hmm. They're like a U shape. Two of them are, are bearish, and then it comes up in a retrace. So when we see that happening, we say, okay, there's that morning star forming. And you guys might hear this a lot. Well, the first candlestick is bearish and indicates that the sellers are still in charge of the market. But the second candle is a small one, which represents that the sellers are in control, but they don't push the market much lower. And this candle can be bullish or bearish. That means this doji don't have to be a, a, a bearish candle. It could be a green candle, but it's a doji. That's what that that's what kind of signals it. When you see a long candle coming down, then you see a little doji that can signal that reversal or that morning star, that U shape. All right. And if you and and here's a good example of it. Okay, who can find me a morning star? Let's see. See, and it signals a reversal. Even though it has wick on it, but you see it all. Up. Yeah, you see this came down, and it wasn't a bearish doji, but there it was. That was the morning star. You see it right here. Change of direction. The little doji come back up. That's that U shape. Can everybody see that? Yes, sir. So you, so you, we see them on 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 bigger trends. Uh, we'll we'll go on the evening star as well, but that's that's the morning star. Okay. Okay. The third candle, the third candle is a bullish candlestick that gapped up on the open and closed above the midpoint of the body of the first day. Well, they must be talking about a day candlestick. This candlestick holds a significant trend, a significant trend reversal signal. Mm -hmm. That's what does it right there. That's the that's what that's what gives you a significant trend reversal signal. Is when you see it's coming down and then it just gets kind of indecisive, like the sellers are not in control. So the morning star pattern shows us how buyers took control of the market from the sellers. And when this pattern occurs at the bottom of the downtrend near the support level, it is interpreted as a powerful trend reversal signal. So the, you can see where the sellers was in control, and then all of a sudden the buyers took control and brought that thing up. Everybody see that? Yes. Hold on. So we're going to get, let's get get going. Excuse me for a second. Okay. Now let's look at, let's look at the support level. Let's, in, it is in terms of power. Let's see the illustration below. We see it all the time. The bearish candle, then we get the small bullish candle, and then the bullish candle took, the, the, took over. The buyers took over. That's a morning star, the U shape. Now that, now, the chart above helps us identify the morning star pattern and how it is significant when it's formed at the bottom of the downtrend. 
Now, as you can see, the pattern occurred at an obvious bearish trend. You see it was going down. See that bearish trend? So the first candle confirms that the seller's domination and the second one produces indecision in the market. The second could be a doji or any other candle. And that was the signal right there. So, but here the doji, let me go up so you can still see it. But here the doji candle indicated that the sellers are struggling to push the market lower. The third bullish candle indicates that the buyers took the control from the sellers and the market is likely to reverse going all the way back up, probably on retracing to the left. Okay, so this is how professional traders analyze the market based on candlestick patterns. And this is how you analyze financial markets. And if you can master the autonomy of candlestick patterns and the psychology behind their formations, then you are you in good shape. Now, here is the evening star. The evening star pattern is considered as a bearish reversal pattern that usually occurs at the top of a trend. So the pattern consists of three candlesticks. The first candle is a bullish candle. The second candle is a small candlestick. Let me let's see. The second candle is a is a small one. And it can be bullish or bearish. This doesn't have to be, you know, it could be white or black, bullish or bearish. Or it can be a doji or any any other kind of now this is what I don't understand, or any other candlestick. I don't, I, you know, every time that we experience evening stars and morning stars, they usually are dojis, aren't they, Bridget? They're dojis, but the one following the doji doesn't have to be um, of the same. Oh, I got you. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay, okay. So the third candle is a large bearish candle. In general, the evening star pattern is the bearish version of the morning star pattern. See the example below. So on the uh, morning star, we saw that it was a U shape. Now on the evening star, it's like an upside down U shape. It's, you, you see that? Yes, you have the the bullish candle coming, the little doji indecisive. See, the, here the buyers were in control. They pushing this thing up. Then all of a sudden they're not in control and boom, here comes the evening star. Okay, so the first pattern of the evening star is a book. Now it's, I just said that. So the first part of the evening star is a bullish candle. And this means that the bulls are pushing the market higher. Right now, everything is going all right. But the formation of the smaller body shows that buyers are still in control, but, the, but they are not as powerful as they were. Because it's still up at the top half of the candle, you know. But the third bearish candle indicates that the buyer's domination is over and it and a possible bearish trend reversal is likely to happen. So see another chart that illustrates how this evening star could represent a significant trend in a reversal signal. You see the trend was going straight up. It was a straight bullish trend going up. And then, mm -hmm. boom, there's that doji. There's that indecisiveness. And then... Here comes the evening stars coming right back down, trend reversal, or what we would say retracing, doing some work on these candles over here. <laughs> you see these candles is wide open. <laughs> so as you can see, as you can see, the market was trending up. The first candle in the pattern indicates the long move up. The second one. The second one is a short candle indicating price consolidation and indecision, this one here. So in other words, the trend that created the first long bullish candlestick is losing momentum. And the final candlestick gapping lower than the previous candlestick indicating a confirmation of the reversal and the beginning of a new trend down. Now, I might have read that too fast, but what they're saying is, to proving this doji was not a bullish, it was not white. Mm -hmm. It, it, it kind of signaled that. So that's what it said. The final uh, candlestick gapping lower than the previous candlestick 
even indicated the confirmation. Because after that, you know how you go higher, high, higher, high, higher, low, higher, high. Well, now here comes the lower low. Mm -hmm. And this was not a white candle. That's all, that's like all kind of confirmation there. Okay, so that's that's the beginning of a trend down. Now the hammer here, the hammer pin bar. <laughs> I be calling everything hammer head. It could still have a little wick up there. I say that's a hammer head. Okay, but the hammer the hammer candlestick is created when the open high and close are roughly the same price, and it is also characterized by a long shadow or wick that indicates a bullish rejection from buyers and their intention to push the market higher. And that's why I say wherever you see this wick, that's the direction of the push. It's pushing up. It's pushing up. If you saw this long wick on top, it's pushing down. It's pushing down. So that's what it said up here. It said it is characterized by a long lower shadow that indicates a push up, a bullish rejection from buyers and their intention to push the market higher. So the closing price and the opening price barely, but boy, it, 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 it pushed. It really tried to push this thing up, but little or no upper shadow. So the hammer is a reversal candlestick pattern uh, when it occurred at the bottom of a downtrend. So if this is at the bottom, like all the way bottom of a downtrend, and you see this long wick pushing up and indices and doji hammerhead pin bar, it can signal the reversal up because all that power of the sellers coming down, it, you know, as in lost momentum, now it's pushing up, up. So the hammer is a reversal candlestick pattern, and when it occurs at the bottom of a downtrend, this, this candle forms when sellers push the market lower and after the open, but they get rejected by buyers, so the market closes higher than the lowest price. See, this is the lowest price at the bottom of the wick. That's where, that's where the candle bends. But that pullback, that push, push. So, um, so the sellers, they were pushing this thing down. They had pushed it all the way down here, you know, after the open. But they got rejected by the buyers who pushed the market close that closed higher than that lowest price. You, you see that? Mm -hmm. So as you can see, the market was trending down, but the formation of the hammer. Pin bar was a significant reversal pattern. So the long shadow represents a high buying pressure from this point. It's pushing, pushing up. So the long shadow or wick, I say, represents the high buying pressure from this point. Sellers were trying to push the market lower, and they got it all the way down to here. But but in that level, the buying power was more powerful than the selling pressure, which resulted in that long wick, that trend reversal. And the most important to understand is the psychology behind the formation of this pattern. If you understand how and why it was created, you will be able to predict the market direction with high accuracy. So we uh, uh, we will talk about how to trade this pattern and how to filter this signal in the next chapters. So if you understand whichever way that wick is pushing, that's a push up right there. Even though it it closed on a bearish, it closed down, but that thing it was down here and it pushed them buyers, pushed that thing all the way up there. So whichever way you see the wick. That's the push. That's pushing down. That was pushing up. Okay, everybody got that? So if you understand that, they say if you understand and predict the market direction with high accuracy, understanding that. Okay. okay. Now here's the shooting star, the bearish pin bar. Now the shooting star formation is formed when, when the open low, because this is a this is bearish. 
when they open a little and close are roughly the same price, this candle is characterized by a small body, just a little bit of body right there and a long upper shadow. So it is the bearish version of the hammer. Professional technicians say that the shadow should be twice the length of the real body. See example below, the shooting star. If you, get, if you have the wick that's a lot longer, at least twice as long as this body, then you can consider it a shooting star, okay? But, but what is this saying? That long thing is a push downward. It's pushing down. Okay, the illustration above shows us perfect shooting star with a real small body and an upper long shadow. When this pattern occurs in an uptrend, it indicates a bearish reversal signal. Hmm. A bearish reversal means this thing is getting ready to go up. So the psychology behind the formation of this pattern is that the buyers try to push the market higher, but they get rejected by that selling pressure, that push down with that long wick. So when the calendar sticks forms near resistance level, like now you know how we be how we all look for the ceiling, and we know where the ceiling is. So that's the level of resistance, the ceiling. So when the candlestick forms near a resistance level, a ceiling, it should be taken high probability setup of knowing that that thing is about to reverse. That's a shooting star. And and what we normally look at, because sometimes you might forget the different names, but what we have found out through experience when we see any kind of doji at the at the resistance level or at the support level, we looking at, and we looking out for a reversal. Isn't that right, brother? It's just any kind. If it's a doji, if this thing been having these nice meaty candles and they roll and roll and roll and then in indecisiveness, ten bar, spinning bar, hammerhead, doji, dragonfly, grace, they all. So this gonna happen. A huh? I say, yep, something's gonna happen. That's just keeping it simple. Uh-huh. Okay, let's let us let us let us move on though. You wanna know this stuff. Uh the chart above shows a nice shooting star at the end of an uptrend. And so the formation of this oh now I wanna say with the with the you know, we've been on the money calls. Now what what how will we look at this setup here? We will see all these butt naked candles right here, right? And then we'll see the doji for the reversal. And guess what we already know in advance? That that one's going to be retraced halfway, that one's going to be retraced halfway, and that one's going to be retraced halfway. And the doji just showed you, hey, man, it might be ready to retrace right now. And Oh, got some profit off that first one. Oh, oh it looks like it's coming to the second one. Uh-oh, uh-oh, it's trying to fake you out. Oh, here it comes. Boom, just hit the second halfway candle coming, you know, and you ride that thing. We we see it. So the chart above shows a nice shooting star at the end of an uptrend. The formation of this pattern indicates the end of an uptrend move and the beginning of a new downtrend. So the candlestick pattern can be used with support and resistance. That means the floor and the ceiling. Uh, the supply and demand areas, you know, we have, a, I wonder if our supply and demand areas is at 60-40 on the RSI. Hmm, that's something to think about. But the candlestick pattern can be used with support and resistance, supply and demand areas, and with technical indicators. Now, the shooting star is very easily, I mean, very easy to identify and is very profitable. It is one of the most powerful signals that I use to enter the market. Oh, wow. When we see a doji at a resistance or a support, a ceiling or a floor is one of the most powerful, I mean, very profitable, and one of the most powerful signals that that Hummer used to enter the market. Wow. Mm -hmm. And we see the doji, and we see we work need to be done on these candles. <laughs> see, we that retrace is very powerful. 
Okay, so in the next chapters, I will talk about it in details, and I will show you step-by-step step how to make money trading this price action pattern. So now we're going with the Harami pattern. And uh, British, I mean, uh, Bridget, she used to point this out a lot. I, I forget it. But the Harami pattern, pregnant in Japanese, wow, is considered a reversal and continuation pattern. And it consists of two candlesticks. The first candle is the large candle. It is called the mother candle, followed by the smaller candle, which is called the baby. Instead of an engulfing candle, it's a baby candle. You, you see the difference? It's just like kind of reverse. So for the Harami pattern to be valid, the second candle should be close outside uh, should be close outside of the previous one. Now this candlestick is considered as a bearish reversal. That means it's, it, it's going to go back up. Signal when it occurs at the top of an, uh, whoa, 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 a bearish reversal signal. That means when it's going down and it's a signal to reverse going up, that's, so this candlestick is considered a bearish reversal signal when it occurs at the top of an uptrend and it is a bullish signal when it occurs at the bottom of a downtrend. Did I read that right? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, okay, did. everybody got it. Yes. When yes. It's, it's basically yes. saying is basically saying sell when it's high, buy when it's low. Okay, see an example below. The har Harami pattern, bullish inside bar. The mother candle is the big one, then you got a smaller candle. Now, as you see, the smaller body is totally covered by the previous mother. So this is like an engulfing uh, candle backwards. But as you see, the smaller body is, is totally covered by the previous mother candle. Don't bother yourself with the colors. The most important is that the smaller body closes inside of the first bigger candle. Can you guys see that? That's not above that point. It is, you know, a little within the body. That's the most important. That is it. That the smaller body closes inside of the first bigger camera. So the Harami candle tells us that the market is in an indecision period. In other words, the market isn't consolidating. So buyers and sellers don't know what to do, and, and there is no one in control of the market. So when this candlestick pattern happens during an uptrend or a downtrend, it is interpreted as a continuation pattern, which gives a good opportunity to join the trend, a good and to show you an example of that. Uh, you see, well, that's a doji right there. But if that wasn't a doji, this was a continuation. It was. One, I have to blow it up for you to see it. And it's really backwards. This is an engulfing candle. Here we go, right here. No, that might not be it either. Okay, let's find a example of a Harami. Y'all see one and I miss it, stop me. Okay, I'm looking. Almost right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. That Let green, me go back some more. Which one? It was green. Um, right, but it's far. It's not close enough. This one, right here, seventeen twenty-four, by the um price and the clock, right next to the price and the clock, right there. But it's a little above it, so. That's not really yeah, uh, so let's go back to the illustration. It, it, but we know what it's talking about, and we see it all the time. This has to be within the body. It's not above, and, and we see it all the time. It, it'll be a long continuation 
like a, like a discontinuation down and you get a little bitty green candle in this continuation or the same up when you're getting it going up. And this, let's say this candle is smaller than that candle within the body. That means it's continuation up. But, so mm-hmm. that's what it's, and we see it a lot. We see it a lot. It's just not in this, there's not a lot of them in this group of graphs. So we'll go back to the illustration. So that's the important thing, that the smaller body closes inside of the first bigger candle. Now, the Harami candle tells us that the market is in decision period. In other words, the market is consolidating. And you know what? We did it today. Every time we get into consolidation, we switch over to the regular old practice account. So buyers and sellers don't know what to do, and there is no one in control of the market. When this candlestick pattern happens during an uptrend or a downtrend, it's interpreted as a continuation pattern, which gives a good opportunity to join the trend. And if it is occurred at the top of an uptrend or at the bottom of a downtrend, it is considered as a trend reversal signal. Hmm. Look at another example below. It happens both ways. You see this bullish harami is smaller than that big bearish candle. So what happened? I, you know, I thought it would be continuation, but this is saying if it's at the bottom, it could signal a reversal. So in the chart above, you can see how a trend direction changes after harami tax pattern formation. The first bullish a harami pattern occurred at the bottom of a downtrend. So sellers were pushing the market lower and suddenly price started consolidating and this indicates that the selling power is no longer in control of the market. And that's when it went on up a little bit. Then it went kind of consolidation. So the bearish harami is the opposite of the bullish. This one occurred at the Oh, okay, now the bearish, let's go up at the top. Here's the bearish at the top. The bearish harami is the opposite of the bullish. This one occurred at the top of the uptrend, indicating that the buyer's domination is over. They were pushing this thing up and up. Everybody was buying. And all of a sudden, this is forming, this bullish bearish harami, this candle is within the boundaries of that body. If I was to blow it up, you would see that. You know, it's within the body frame. That means the bearish harami. So when it's like that, there no uh, the selling power is no longer in control of the market. The bearish harami is up. So okay, when the pattern is created during an uptrend or downtrend, it is indicates a continuation signal with the direction of the market. Now let's see what that's saying. I didn't see that, did when when this pattern is created during an uptrend or a downtrend, it indicates a continuation signal with the direction of the market. So I don't see that here. So it must be an overall downtrend or something. And this is a pull. I mean, do you see that, Bridget? No. I don't see continuation here. It must be below it. It must be below it. Let's move on. Nope. Hmm. So we will study in details how to trade this pattern, either as a reversal pattern or as a continuation pattern in the next chapters. Yeah, because I don't, I see this, I don't see continuation anywhere in that. Okay, no. I see reverse. Now, now the tweezers, tops and bottoms, so we, we, we will have to work through that. I might have to go through this a couple of times myself. We'll, we'll have answers for you. Okay, the tweezers, the tops and the bottoms. We call them the double tops and the double bottoms. The tweezer top, the tweezer top formation is considered as a bearish reversal pattern. See at the top of an uptrend and the tweezers bottom formation is interpreted as a bullish reversal pattern. See at the bottom of a downtrend. So see the example, bearish and bullish candle. You got the tweezer bottom. That means that's a double bottom. Now, Bridget, let me ask you something. Okay. We call this a double bottom, double top. Right. 
but they just call it a bottom, a tweezer a bottom. So this is like indecision when we look at it. It's a man, they don't know what it's, let's wait for the next candle. Okay, okay the tweezer, tweezer top. Is not equal. Okay, not even. okay gotcha. That's so the yeah. The bottom are equal. Equal. Bottom equal. That's a double bottom. The top is not that quite exact. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. The double top. They not double. Okay. So the tweezer top formation consists of two candlesticks. The first one is a bullish candlestick followed by a bearish candlestick. And the tweezer bottom formation consists of two candlesticks as well. Now, I want to show you what, what that is. Now, and it's easy to find them on a chart. You just look for the bridget points. You see that bridget point? That's a double top. That's a, that's a double top. That's a tweezer top. Come down. You look at a bridget point that's down here. Okay, that's a double bottom. That's a tweezer bottom. And you see they're not the same at the top. So that's a double bottom. That's a tweezer bottom. You see, they are not same at the bottom. So that's a tweezer top. That's a double top. Okay. So mm -hmm. that's what they're showing. So so um, that's what that consists of two candlesticks. And it could be bullish or bearish or bearish or bullish. I mean, but you know, it's a double top, double bottom. Double bottom is when the first one is bearish. The double top is when, the, yeah, I think that's what it's saying. Let's look again mm -hmm. to be sure. Okay. When it, now, this is the illustration of a double top, and that's when the, the bullish is first. And then a double bottom, the bearish is first. You see that? Yeah. So that's how yeah. that, that's rolling. So when they're talking about a tweezer top, the bullish comes first. A tweezer bottom, the bearish come first. Got it. See? The bearish. Okay. So uh, the first one is the bullish candlestick followed by a bearish candlestick. And the, and the tweezer bottom formation consists of two candlesticks as well. So the first candle is a bearish followed by a bullish candlestick. And we just went through all this. And so we can say that the tweezer bottom is a bullish version of the tweezer top. So tweezer top occurs, well, I just want to say double top and double bottom. But the tweezer, <laughs> the tweezer's top hey, occurs. Why can't you? Rudy, why can't you? Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. I'm just well, saying. I'm just reading. You know, I'm I'm reading this. I'm reading it word for word. You know. Okay, but we call it. But, a double but you bottom. don't have to understand what it's talking about. Okay. Right on. So the top of the so the uh, so the double top occurs during the uptrend. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that's that's good. Okay. But an uptrend okay. when the buyers push the price higher, this gives us the impression that the market is still going up, but sellers surprise buyers by pushing the market lower and close down and close down to the open of the bullish candle. Now that's uh you know I want to explain this paragraph on an uptrend when you're looking at a double top like a double top mm -hmm. it looks like it might be continuation going up in that next candle where the seller surprised the buyers and said nope. We pushing this thing down. So it says when them buyers pushed that price higher, it gave us the impression the market is still going up. But boy, those sellers surprised the buyers. And they pushed that market lower and closed down to the open of the bullish candle, meaning a reverse, a retrace, 100% retrace. Mm -hmm. That's when you're talking about a strong double top. And that, that really signals uh, it's coming down, at least a couple of candles, okay? So price, so, so, uh, so that's what all that was just saying. So this price action pattern indicates a bullish trend reversal. And when we trade it, we can combine this signal with other technical tools. So what it was saying that when you see a double top, you know it's a trend reversal coming down. You you know when you see a double top, it's coming down. 
You know, you know when you see a double top, it's coming down. You see that. It's a double top. It's coming down. It, 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 even though it might not be a full trend, but you see how it becomes uh, bearish. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so the tweezer bottom happens during a downtrend when the sellers push to market lower. We feel that everything is going all right, but the next session, that next candlestick price closes above or roughly at the same price as the first, like a 100% retrace. The bearish candle that was going down, which indicates that the buyers are coming to reverse the market direction when you see that double bottom. If this price action happens near a support level, oh my God, it indicates that the bearish reversal is likely to happen. So you now, now let's just say these two tops are not equal, okay? Because mm-hmm. that kind of really do look like a double top to me. But if mm-hmm. they're not equal, and you can have a long, you got this downtrend going. You see the downtrend. All these black candles, all these bearish candles, and just a few bullish. And then all of a sudden, you get them that strong double, that double bottom is so strong, it retraced the whole candle 100%. Then that's a signal that the trend is to be reversing straight as a trend reversal. Okay, so the chart above shows us that the double bottoms that occur in the downtrend and that is coming down, like all the way down, the bears push that market down with on the first session. However, that second candle open where price closed and on the first candlestick it went straight up indicating a reversal buy signal that you can trade if you have other elements that confirm your buying decision. You know, you, you see it's a double bottom. You see it's what, uh, uh, or it's crossing up back above the 40 or you, you know, you, you see other variable variables, a uh, market trend confirmation. That's what it's saying. You, you get some kind of confluence there. So, so, uh, the second session, so the second session over in price, over, okay. Don't focus. Did I read this whole paragraph? Yes. Oh, yeah. Don't focus on the name of a candlestick. Try to understand the psychology behind its formation. This is most important. So the psychology is that the sellers was pushing this thing down and the buyers took control and they pushing this thing so hard to to it's a, a trend reversal, especially if it's a hundred percent retrace. Oh, that that thing is, you know, especially if you're looking at other uh, variables like this is at the bottom of the hour too, or at the top of the hour too. <laughs> That's something that we just see a lot though. So because if you can understand why it was formed, you will understand what happened in the market. And you can easily predict the future movement of a price. So now the candlestick patterns exercise. Now I think you can get some information about candlestick, Japanese candlesticks. You know the uh, anatomy of the candlestick and the psychology behind its formation. Let's take this exercise to test your knowledge and see if you still remember all the candlesticks we we talked about. Okay. Now look at the chart below, and and I don't use the word try. Look at the chart below and find the name of each candlestick number and the psychology behind its formation. What is number one? Who can tell me what number one is? It's the Japanese pregnant candle, um, the Harami. Right, is that the Harami? Uh Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Okay, now that was Bridget. Now someone else tell me what this is, what number two is. Come on, Number y'all. Number two. Double top. Number two. That's what, right. that tweezer? Right. That double bottom, double top? Yes, sir. That's right. 
Okay, well, what is number three? Can anybody tell me what number three is? What would you call this one candle right here? Engulfing. Engulfing, there it is, Brother Benny. All right, that's that engulfing candle. Okay, oh, y'all think y'all bad, huh? Okay, now we're really cooking with some grease now. Who can tell us what number four is? Same thing as number three. It might, you might be right. Just the opposite well, well, wait side. a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Sometime, wait a minute. Okay, I don't know, because I, I thought it might have been a Harami, but, no, okay. The opposite. No, the Harami is the, this one is the smaller one on a Harami. So right. this is the engulfing. Mm -hmm. What is number five? Um, that looks like engulfing again. Yes, it does. Um, and it could be a double bottom. Anybody yeah. else want to kick in on this conversation here? Now, not just us now. Well, look, let's 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 go through it together. Okay, let's just see. Let's just see. If, but if you still struggle to identify these patterns, you will have to start learning about them again until you feel like you master them. And we, if you, you know, we might not know the names of every doji, but we know it's a doji. You know, we might not know the name of every harame and all that, but guess what? The number one was the harame. You know, the harame is the baby in the pregnancy. Harame means pregnant, right? Mm -hmm. So the yes, so the first candle is the mother, and the second one is the little bitty baby. That's the harami. Harami means pregnant. So the formation of this candlestick pattern indicates indecision in the market. In other words, the market was consolidating during this session. And look at it. It was consolidating, going straight sideways. This was the signal that it's going sideways. That's good stuff. Number two is the double bottom, level tops, the bullish tweezers. And when the market was trading up and sellers tried to push the market lower, but the reaction of the buyers was more powerful. And that next candlestick, that thing shot up 100% retrace. This pattern represents the battle between the sellers and the buyers to take control of the market. Number three, the engulfing candlestick thing, the engulfing bar. Now, sellers were engulfed by the buyers. This indicates that the buyers are still willing to push the market higher. So, this engulfing bar is number four, five, six. Oh, wow. And they did look, I was looking at that. That's engulfing. That's engulfing. That's engulfing. That's engulfing. Yeah, uh, and then number six is in, huh? Number six is engulfing. Engulfing candle is always on the right. Is that is that correct? Say that again. It's but it, but it's always on the right, isn't it? Yeah, it's always yeah. on the right, and it's totally engulfed. That means it's bigger than the previous candle. The previous candle can fit inside this candle. The previous candle can fit inside it. Mr. Trey, don't you call can, that? Listen, Mr. Clay. Engulfing. It engulfs the previous candle. Mr. Clay, don't you call that something else? Who, Which me? One? Yeah, what do you call I it? Call the, I, I call now me, I would, if this is precise, I call that a double bottom. Mm-hmm. Double bottom, double bottom, this engulfing, double bottom, double bottom, okay, engulfing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Because it's going to show up as a double bottom. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, the engulfing bar is four, not, matter of fact, three, four, five, and six. 
according, and they are in essence, but we do call these the double bottoms. So that's some good stuff. Three, four, five, and six. And then seven, guess what seven is? That's that Harami. It's the big mother and the little baby. Mm -hmm. The Harami pattern, pregnancy. This pattern shows us that the market enters a consolidation phase. During this session, uh, is that a period? So this pattern shows us that the market enters a, into, in a consolidation phase during this session. So buyers and sellers are in an indecision period, and no one knows who is going to be in control of the market. And that is what this is kind of signaling here for the Harami and kind of here on the Harami. Okay? Yeah. So now let's take another, okay, here it is. Let's take another exercise. Look at the chart below and, and figure out these candlestick patterns. Hmm. Number one, who got number one? Well, I'll say that's engulfing and a double bottom. <laughs> yep. Give them two definitions. So now right, just right. Yeah. But yeah, that, that is cool. engulfing, and mm -hmm. it's a double bottom. So double bottom signal goes up just as well as engulfing signals uh, going up. Okay, number two and three are the same thing. What is That's number two and three? Hammerhead. Is that the hammerhead? That's that hammerhead right there. That's that hammerhead. And number three, this right here, I know that's a doji. Baby, but yeah. what kind of doji? What would be the name of that doji? Spinning top? But this is more like a spinning top next to it. I don't know. A baby. That's a Harami. That's a baby. It's a hammer, which is the large body, and the smaller body is the baby. So it's a Harambe pattern. But I didn't know the yeah. hammer... Would be so so this this first head. one is a hammerhead because it has a little wick. But if it didn't have a little wick on top of it, it'll be called what a dragonfly. I mean a dragon uh, a, a dragonfly doji. No, if it didn't have the hammerhead, it would have been a complete candle. So she, they're calling it a harambe pattern. Okay, okay, this pattern. Okay, now what about four? Four is um, engulfing. Yeah, same as one. So let's see. Let's see where we're at here. Here's the answers. Number one is the bullish engulfing. That's the engulfing candlestick. Number two is the hammerhead. And number three is the hammer, which is the large body plus small body baby, Harami. Go ahead, Bridget. Ooh. Well, see, I oh. had notes the last time. I had my notes. I had my notes. Oh, <laughs> you got the notes. <laughs> I like, go ahead, girl. Yeah. And number four is the bullish engulfing bar, same as number one. Mm hmm. Now, when we look at the candles, okay, that's a double bottom. This thing getting ready to go up. That's a double bottom. I mean, that, that this thing is continuation. It's been all these these candles, and then we had the little doji. Uh oh, we better start looking. It might be reversal if it's on a strong trend. Though we know that's continuation. Now this, I would have saw that big doji. I don't know. This the doji would have got me. I said, oh, we better start looking at that reversal now. The hammer here wouldn't have gotten me. Okay. So please, I want you to open your charts and do this homework over and over again. You will see that, uh, you will see that with screen time and practice, you will be able to look at your charts and understand what the candlesticks tell you about the market. So don't worry about how to enter and exit the market and for the moment. Take your time and master the candlestick patterns discussed in the previous chapters. So in the next chapters, I will arm you with the techniques that will help you identify 
the best entry and exit points based on candlestick patterns in combination with technical analysis. Oh, yes. So trust me, these price action strategies uh, will turn you from a beginner trader who struggles to make money into in the market into a profitable price action trader. Oh, that's a, and you know what? On that note, that's a good that's a good note to end on. That's a good note to end on. We're gonna hey the price. We're gonna get into. Turning from a beginner trader who struggles to make money in the market into a profitable price action trader, boy. And so the market structure we're going to start tomorrow, we're going to get into the market structure. I ain't going to let y'all read it yet. <laughs> y'all got the book, though. And if anyone does not have um, this this trading Bible, the Candlestick Trading Bible, get with your sponsor and make sure you have it because we give it to everybody free. We will email it to everybody, you know, so uh, do that. So we're going to close this call out. I really appreciate everybody being on the call. I want to thank God for God. And guess what? You had fun learning something tonight? Guess what I want? Everyone to put a 777 in the chat. Uh, if they learned right. something this evening and they got something good out of this call today. Y'all got me started with the 777 thing. That's all right. That's all right. Okay. So uh, I want to thank God for God. I want to thank you all for staying on this incredible journey. And uh, the next money call is at 8 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Central, and 5 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Well, we're going to be getting these pips with your host, Miss Bridget Moore. So get ready for in the morning, and uh, we'll be talking soon. Any questions? Anyone have any questions? We're back on our regular schedule tomorrow morning, right? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. All right. You guys have a great evening. Okay. Be peaceful, team. Okay. All right. And thank you, Bridget. Take care now. See you.